वेलकम टू योर केमिस्ट्री क्लास टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट ऑस्मोसिस एंड ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर दी सब मैटर इज ऑस्मोसिस एंड ऑस्मोटिक प्रेशर थोड़ा देखा हूँ ठीक रहा कोई भी प्रेशर सो लेट अस स्टार्ट what do you mean by osmosis osmosis first definition i can say it is the phenomenon by which the solution of lower concentration the solvent from the lower concentration goes to the solution of higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane the process by which a solute solvent from lower concentration goes to the higher concentration through a semi permeable membrane what do you mean by semi permeable membrane egg membrane fish bladder etc are considered a semi permeable membrane which can allow only the solvent let's say water not to the any solute particle if we prepare a solution Let's say concentration one is kept in this U tube like this, and this U tube, where the middle part has a semi-permeable membrane. It is a semi-permeable membrane. This is the concentration one solution having concentration C one, another solution having concentration C two. Let this solution of concentration C1 is greater than C2. Let's say the concentration of C1, let's say greater than C2. These two solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane. This membrane. Only allows the solvent molecules, solvent, from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. Until these two solutions tend to be same concentration. So the process here is called osmosis. If there is no semi-permeable membrane, if there is no semi-permeable membrane. When the concentration C1 is here, the concentration C2 is here. Where C1 is greater than C2, then we see the solute particle from this concentration, higher concentration, will go to the lower concentration to equalize the concentration of the two solution. But in this case, as because the solute particles cannot able to pass through, go through this semi-permeable membrane, the solvent has to move towards this. higher concentration to make an equilibrium between the two solutions this is the process but if there is no semi membrane then that is called your diffusion in this case let's say this is a very salty solution this is only water let's say when the very salty solution is there and water is poured in this side salty solution if you pour in this side the water then you automatically see after some time this two solution having same salt taste means what happens here the salt particles from this con higher concentration intermix with each other to give a uniform solution that is called your diffusion no sample membrane is required so here the process is always going on in case of diffusion this diffusion process always going on because of the kinetic process of the molecules but in case of osmosis the process is not take place as long as possible because when the solvent molecules comes to this side what happens here then there is some extra pressure is to be exerted on this membrane so that that may tend to oppose this inflow of the solvent molecule from this side to the higher concentration side so an extra pressure is to be exerted on this semi permeable membrane 
that extra pressure which exert on the semi permeable membrane in order to check the inflow of the solvent molecule towards this higher concentration side is called osmotic pressure that is called we denote it as pi osmotic pressure so then what is osmotic pressure you know the process will continue till an extra pre extra pressure is exerted on the sample membrane from this solution side to check the inflow of the solvent molecule this is what is called osmotic pressure and here we have to discuss the osmosis process or the phenomena you nearly observe in your day to day life je to mane pila janicho jodi ame motor dana sukla motor dana pani ra pakeba sakale ame motor jhulo bhuguni kari khaiwa to ratir pani ra paduchi sakale sira bodo bodo hoi jauchi that is due to osmosis because the water molecule penetrated into that seed or the piece into the seed of the piece so that it will swell up the dried up fruits swells up due to osmosis and you can easily experiment to that is when two x are taken let's say we are considered two x on boiled x x you first remove the hard covering by dipping into dilute air because the hard covering you know the composition is calcium carbonate when it is dipped into the acl solution what happens there the hard cover of the egg removed automatically by the acl concentrated acl or dilute acl even then you see one cover is there one membrane is there egg membrane and that egg you make this type of preparation 2x one egg let you put in water one egg you put in water and another egg you may put in the very salty solution salty solution very salt salt solution concentrated salt solution what what you observe then after and the egg which is in the water will increase its size and the egg inside the salt solution will decrease its size to some extent because of osmosis here and here is reverse osmosis what do you mean by reverse osmosis what happens the the egg membrane that allows the fluid of the egg from the egg inside and goes outside to the salt solution and that is called reverse osmosis so here we discuss the osmosis and here is reverse osmosis and the size of the egg in water you know automatically will become becomes larger or bigger because the water molecule goes into the higher concentration of this fluid of the egg from the water to the inside the egg here the fluid of the egg goes out to the concentrated solution side because of the reverse osmosis automatically the size of the egg becomes minimum minimized or becomes smaller so this is what is called osmosis and reverse osmosis and here it is osmosis what happens in case of this osmotic if when we measure the osmotic pressure then a method that is berkeley hartley method is used to experimental determine the osmotic pressure let us consider some terms involving this osmosis or osmotic osmosis so when two solutions are of same osmotic pressure then these two solutions are called isotonic solution isotonic isotonic solution means having same osmotic pressure means pi1 is equal to pi2 and in case of hypertonic solution hypertonic solution the the osmotic pressure if the first solution is greater than that of second solution 
then this first solution is said to be hypotonic and the second solution is said to be second solution is said to be hypotonic hypotonic solution these are some terms involved in this depending on the magnitude of osmotic pressure os osmotic pressure these solutions can be categorized as isotonic solution hypotonic solution hypotonic solution so now let's discuss about this osmotic pressure and this osmotic pressure is a colligative property means the osmotic pressure depends on the concentration of the solution solute particles or the solution concentration of the solution or solute particles or the number of solute particle present in the higher concentration side that is that is the colligative property you know colligative property is the property which depends on the number of solute particles present in the solution so here this osmotic pressure again depends on concentration and temperature this can be correlated by van't hoff theory and in this van't hoff theory he consider he consider the osmotic pressure of a very dilute solution and when we are considering a very dilute solution then that is taken as an ideal solution when the solution is ideal the ideal gas law may be applied and that can applied in this case by van't hoff considering two laws one is boyle van't hoff law another is charles van't hoff law let us consider what do mean by boyle van't hoff law in boyle's law similar to the boyle's law you know in case of boyle's law what do you know you know the pressure and volume are inversely proportional in this case also the boyle van't hoff law boyle van't hoff law states that at constant temperature at constant temperature the osmotic pressure of a dilute solution is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution if concentration of the solution is high then osmotic pressure becomes very high and this concentration term can be represented as number of moles per unit volume n by b so let's consider the number of moles constant here pi proportional to 1 by b this is what is boyle van't hoff law that similar to that of p proportional 1 by b or v proportional 1 by p so this is what is called boyle van't hoff law at constant temperature the osmotic pressure of a dilute solution is directly proportional to concentration of the solution or inversely proportional to volume of the solution again another law that is charles van't hoff law can also be applied charles van't hoff law what is that now here at the osmotic pressure of a dilute solution at constant concentration is directly proportional to the absolute temperature is directly proportional to absolute temperature this is what is called charles van't hoff law the osmotic pressure of a dilute solution at constant concentration is directly proportional to temperature means when temperature of the solution becomes high more and more solvent molecule can flow to the solution sides and giving rise to more osmotic pressure and by considering the both laws the van't hoff law van't hoff law of dilute van't hoff law is derived from consider this two where pi proportional to 1 by b and pi proportional t consider this two we can write <coughs> pi proportional t by v
और पाई प्रोफेशन सी टी यू में राइट पाई प्रोफेशन वन बाई और सी लेट से सी सो पाई प्रोफेशन सी टी हियर पाई प्रोफेशन सी टी एंड पाई इज इक्वल टू एंड अदर कॉन्स्टेंट आइडल गैस कॉन्स्टेंट कैन बी रिप्रेजेंट हियर आर सी टी एंड व्हेन सी इज द कंसेंट्रेशन नंबर ऑफ मोल्स पर लीटर सो पाई इज इक्वल टू एन बाई वी इनटू टी और यू में राइट दिस पाई भी इज इक्वल टू एन आर टी एंड हियर एट कांस्टेंट टेम्परेचर एंड एंड एट कांस्टेंट टेम्परेचर यू कैन पाई भी इज इक्वल टू इज इक्वल डायरेक्ट प्रोफेशन टू एन एट कांस्टेंट वॉल्यूम पाई इज ऑल्स कांस्टेंट टू टी दैट मींस कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सॉल्यूशन दैट इज एन बाय वी हियर वी इज द वॉल्यूम इन लीटर एंड एन इज द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स एंड नंबर ऑफ मोल्स यू कैन राइट नंबर ऑफ मोल्स इज इक्वल टू पाई वी इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू बाय एम डब्ल्यू मींस व्हाट ऑफ द सॉल्यूट सॉल्यूट पार्टिकल्स एम एल मॉलिक्यूलर मास नंबर ऑफ मोल्स कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड आर टी सो बाय Considering these two equations, these two equations we can derive pi v is equal to W R T by m. And here, as because pi v is equal to n R T, from this we can calculate this one. And here, pi means osmotic pressure depends on number of moles of the solute particles that means it is a colligative property osmotic pressure at constant temperature you can say is directly proportional number of moles means osmotic pressure is a colligative property for a dilute solution and from this we can determine molecular mass of the solute here the molecular mass you can easily derive m is equal to w r t by pi v m is the molecular mass w is the weight of the solute particles r is the gas constant t is the temperature in absolute scale pi is the osmotic pressure v is equal to volume of the solution in liter these are the some important derivations and you can determine molecular mass from the osmotic pressure data by help of the formula m is equal to w r t by pi v so this is about the osmotic pressure and its correlation with the uh, colligative property and uh, how to determine the molecular mass from this next class we will discuss about the abnormal colligative property of the dilute solutions let's stop and we will discuss in the next class thank you